Hello everyone, this is Calvin Castine at Northeastern Clinton Central School. October 1st, 1991, and we're here for CVAC, Champlain Valley Athletic Conference Varsity Action. Northeastern Clinton being visited by the Seton Catholic Knights. <laughs> Referees today, we have Jim Schutz on this side and Gary Hathaway on the other. I'll quickly give you Bob Poyer's Seton lineup. In goal is Jason Beebe. Number six is Ethan Cole. Number nine, Matt McLean. Number 20, Chris Jones. Number 21, Tim Monette. 14, Steve Brown. 16, Jess Hathaway, whose father just happens to be refereeing tonight. Uh, eight, Simon Conroy. 22, Paul Pendleton. 23, Jeff Wood. 19, Kurt LaValle. 18, Bill Tassaloni, or Tassalone. 17, Steve Wu. 15, Michael Hill. And let's see. Let's watch the action here. Okay, it's coming back to midfield, so we'll continue. 12 is Jaime Del Pobo. And 10 is Sean Barrell. Barrell. 24 is Barry Breen. 13 is Zach Langto. 7 is Glenn Fulner. 5 is Mario Boulay. 4 is Erwin Poromo. 2 is Gary uh, Corey Juno. And 3 is John Everett. And I'll give you the Northeastern lineup probably at halftime. And uh, we can concentrate on the lineup and not have to worry about the game. It'll be a Cougar kick. Offsides. Hey, wait, get out of there. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it's foggy everywhere, but uh, here at the moment, uh, a lot of fog just below us at the top of a hill here, and it hasn't reached here yet, but. Uh, it's, it could have some fog before this game gets too far along. Marty Picor was taping in Shazy for us during the youth game there, and he said uh, coming up here it was very foggy on the roads. New booth, uh, we were told it was built by Larry Bayshard. Rick Frisbee said uh, we provided the lumber. I'm not sure who we is, but uh, uh, Bayshard built that booth, and we've been in there, and it's an excellent, excellent job. I have a nice bench there for the scorekeepers to see, the, to sit on. The, there is a little problem in the corners with the, the vision, and when the ball goes out, they're going to have to rely on the umpire uh, referee on this side of the field to let them know whose uh, turn it is or the, the guys who are waiting to come in to let them know whose turn it is to, for the throw in because you have if it's a white throw in then the, the white players come in if it's a blue throw in you have the blue players come in so the guy on the horn has to know whose throw in it is so we can announce that there's players to come in. Nice shot there but right at BB. Seaton took the JV game two to one. Good crowd here and it was a freebie. The people who normally sell the tickets at the gate are working in the the booth for the booster club. And uh, people who were supposed to work for the booth in the booster club didn't show for whatever reason. 
So all these people in attendance got in free. Hope they spend an extra dollar at the concession stand to balance things out. Baby boots it out. Faye on that shot. Blue kick. Back to BB. <laughs> BB puts the brakes on, ball stays in, feels a little damp, rain most of the day. Nice shot by Brown right to BB. We're at the 30 minute mark with no score. Blue kick. Nice shot. Off the crossbar. Bass Majin's down. Kicked out. By uh, a fountain. see the fog starting to come on the field. It's going to get pretty foggy here in a while. Oh, 
And Vast Majin's mother's it. Right kick. Right to BB. No score, 26 21 showing. Super now with a shot, BB with a dive and grab. They're going to have a rethrow. But I said the, not so much on this side, but uh, when the ball's in the corner on the other side, the scorekeeper's going to have to have some help from the officials. Uh, officials don't always signal it too well who's throwing it is, and if uh, scorekeepers can't tell, and they don't know whether they should buzz that horn or not. Dubuque throws it in.
Sorry, it's called. We have to show these people is to lean out of the booth. Got a good crowd on both sides of our booth today. Getting kind of foggy out there. Probably over on the right, on this side, not bad. Off 
Surfside it's called. No score, about 11 and a half to go. We're in the first half, Northeastern Clinton being visited by Seton Catholic. First day of October, 1991. There's a ball over there. There's a ball in the middle of that fog. This fog is uh, slowly clearing off the field, heading to the west, or to the south, I should say. Trip would be a white kick. Ten minutes to go on the half. Maybe. Oh, the white charge called. Oh, nice. Nice pass there and a shot by number nine. That was McLean with the shot to uh, Basmajan. White trip called. Seven and a half to go in the first half. No score. Supernal will remember that one for a while. And down the bass major. 
White push called. White push. Seaton will keep the pressure on. Four minutes to go in the first half. Nice kick. And no hand. No handball called. It's the goal, Paulson goes out. Corner kick for the Cougars. <laughs> in a minute to go in the first half. BB out to get it.
At the end of the first quarter, first half, there's no score. Seton Catholic visiting the Northeastern Clinton Cougars on October 1st, 1991. A small sampling of the crowd here. They look better than this in, in person. They just say they look that way on TV. Let's see here. I promised you the Northeastern lineup, and we're going to give it to you right now. Goalie Matt Bassmajan, number 22, Kurt Weierstahl. 20, Brad Brooks. 12, Mark or Marcel Jeanette. He goes by both. 18, Mike Fay. 24, Chris Dubuque. Brother of Blood and Guts Dubuque down here. He's taking in the game tonight. Uh, let's see. 16, Jeremy Agor. 15, Scott LaFountain. 17, Craig Schonver. Pee Wee, they call him. A kick by Fay. The fog has lifted a little bit. Uh, let's continue here. 2.15, and uh, the ball's going to come back and forth. Kind of tough with one eye on the game, one eye on our roster here to read these off, but we're going to keep trying. Uh, number 8, Tim Supernaw, 7, Matt Gagno, 23, Andy Brown, 11, Matt Fredette. Yeah, let's see, 9 is Chris Pete. Another layer of fog coming in. Four, Joel Matten. Uh, James Matten, I'm not sure if he's back in the lineup yet. I don't have him uh, at this roster a, a while back. A lot of fog out there right now. It seems to follow the Cougar offense around. I would think that would be to their advantage. Uh, let's continue. 25, John Racine. 18, Lee Morrison. 21, Jamie Gowett. 13, Ben Gooley. 28, David Post. And 14, Gray McCaslin. Coach, Dale Hawksby. Wow. Cannot do much to improve this picture. It's all fog. Well, we can um, attempt to lighten it. That won't help. And if we darken it, that won't help either. So we we'll have to go with what's available out there. And what's available is a lot of fog. Now it seems to be all over the field. And uh, Seton with a threat. Where's the ball? There it is. I think the ball is shiny. Cougar's on the attack now. Northeastern corner kick. BB has it, and he's up. We're getting good crowds here at Northeastern. I'm sure the players really appreciate all these people coming to the ball games now. Of course, the inspiration for these lights came from uh, none other than Seton Catholic. And they had a lot of help with the lights by uh, Louis Levesque, who was formerly at Seton Catholic, or actually at MAI when he was there. Or 
There's the ball. There it is. White throwing. After a hard day in the booth, uh, in the food booth, Amy Perrier and Becky Swinton head out. God for shin guards. Kick on the push. Tim. Looks like Tim Supernaw let it in. Tim Supernaw poked it in. It hit the crossbar underneath and stayed in. A one nothing lead for Northeastern. 33-19 showing on the clock. Cougars lead, 1-0, Seton will kick off. Uh, see the white trip but uh, not sure why the blue foot was in the air maybe self-defense Hathaway throws it in jumps for that one. Kick on the blue push. No hand. I'm 
picked up by Bass Majin. Twenty one on the shot, that would be Tim Monette. White kick. Six thirty left in the game. that time. Both row. And then we throw it for the subs coming in. White charge. 
Little kick. White kick this time. I know it's getting physical when you're getting one direct kick after another out there. Nothing too bad yet, but uh, a lot of direct kicks because of the pushing and tripping and so on. Quite direct. Quite direct. I don't know. Cougars. Uh, Stop it right there. Is that a direct goalie? Cougars may have preferred if there had been no whistle on that one. Eighteen left in the game, one nothing Northeastern. Blue throw in. Oh, 
Little kick on the white trip. Last Nugent kicks it up to midfield. Morrison did everything but flip over backwards to keep that one in, but it was a blue throw in. White kick, and blue charge. Trying to pick off the crowd one by one. It's in. Batted out by Bass Majin, but it's in, says Hathaway. Hathaway says it crossed the plane, so it's a goal, and uh, it's a 1 1 score, 11.40 to go. One one the score. Don't know who scored. We're busy watching uh, the after effects of the of the goal. So we weren't able to see who was getting congratulated, but Seaton has scored to tie it one to one. attack on the Cougars. Nice job there by BB. Fog is coming back. Thank 
8.40 left in the game. Regulation time. left in the game in regulation time. One run to score. So by number seven, we'll have to check who that is for Northeastern. Daniel, according to my sheet here, took that shot. Again, getting very foggy. Ball's in front of the goal, over the top. Corner kick, unless the one off blue, that's out. Push, right kick. It's kicked out. I think the Duke had the right idea. Kick it in a hurry. Give time for the offense to set up. You're also giving time for the defense to set up. I think Faye wanted that ball. Kick for blue. 325 to go. Eyes lift. Not quite deep enough. regulation. Offsides, offsides. 2.08 to go. It's 
going to start to look like overtime. Fascinating with the ball. They're saying just a few seconds to go, and that's going to be it. They're going to go to overtime here. Seaton will kick it right at the last second. Overtime, 1 1 after an hour and 20 minutes of action. We'll get up to 10 minute overtimes coming right up. <laughs> yeah. We have overtime. Who's going to kick off? Looks like Seaton will. Two tens. And finally, 1-1 one, one after regulation. Seton Catholic at Northeastern Clinton on the first day of October in 1991. Northeastern corner kick. Hathaway calls uh, elbow. Call it on his son, Jess. White kick. Brown. Yes. Randy Brown took that kick, brought it right back. A lot of speed, strong legs. Uh, he's the top jumper in the section seven. And at 8.01 to go in the first overtime, we have a 2 1 lead for Northeastern. Still have 18 minutes of overtime remaining. It's automatic double overtime for those of you not familiar with it. Play two tens, two ten minute overtime periods. The reason they do that is because weather conditions can sometimes have a big effect in a ball game. You can have mud, 
in front of one goal and not the other. You're going to have wind blowing in one direction, not the other. And to give each team a shot at each goal, they play two 10-minute overtimes. Once you get to the sectionals or championship game where somebody has to advance and you go into five minute overtimes following the tens and you go to sudden death or you go to shootouts. Usually it's go to shootouts and no sudden death anymore. And after two rounds of shootouts you go to sudden death shootouts or sudden victory as they're called. Sudden death sounds a little a little gloom, a little... I don't want to make it sound like a victory, not somebody dying out there. White plush, blue kick. I was kind of hoping the Cougars wouldn't score right there because uh, we had one of our famous battery changes. Uh, battery died in the middle of the action, but the Cougars were called for an offsides right after our battery went, and uh, we missed uh, 22 seconds of action for a lack thereof. Push. Four minutes to go. Two, yes. Goes in, Mike Fay. Mike Fay scores on a direct kick off BB. And we have a three to one contest now with 3.55 left in the first of two overtimes. Seaton kicks off. Remember that booth over there built by Larry Bayshard. Not sure if he had any help, but uh, I hope you Cougar fans uh, thank Larry. He's been out of school a while. Uh, Bayshard's a long active, uh, boys active in sports in the area. The last one to play here at Northeastern was uh, LP Leonard. He graduated about three years ago, I guess. Maybe two. Last major kicks it out. Oh, <laughs> 
Brown are out to BB. A minute and a half to go in the first overtime. Coaches Bob Poyer for Seton, Dale Hawksby for Northeastern Clinton. Future viewer patrons, I would hope. Have a corner kick in the fog for the Cougars down to 45 seconds. Last <laughs> region. <laughs> Kaslin kicks it out. Five seconds. First overtime ends with the Cougars leading the Knights by a three to one margin. The fans are getting rowdy out here. Ten minutes to go. And even if we're tied, that's going to be it. But Northeastern's up by two at the moment. Three to one. It sounds like we'll have to have the ball kicked off. Northeastern will kick it off to start the second overtime. Cougar kick. listed in the Cougar book and I'm not sure if that's David Post who's supposed to be number 28 or not out there. I went uh, after the first half trying to figure out 
who that was but I didn't have him on my sheet and he wasn't listed Seaton 3 to 1. Champlain Valley Athletic Conference Varsity Soccer.
final score in double overtime. A victory for Northeastern Clinton defeating Seton Catholic by a three to one margin. And that's the way it was in CBAC Varsity Soccer Action at the NCCS Field Under the Lights here on this first day of October 1991.